The ending of Attack on Titan led us to believe that Mikasa finished off Eren for good, bringing a permanent end to the Titans. But is this actually what happened? So many fans are convinced there's actually more to the story, especially since multiple elements in the story itself were left unresolved. I've created a theory you won't find anywhere else based on one important detail that both Isayama and literally 99% of Attack on Titan fans completely forgot about. This video will change how you view the entire series, as I present all of the evidence that the ending is actually not what it seems. So what happened? Eren initiates the rumbling, and hordes of colossal titans begin trampling the earth, destroying everything outside the island of Paradis. We're shown that the rumbling is stopped by the attack on Titan Avengers. Eren and Armin duke it out, leading to Mikasa tragically taking out Eren, finally showing Ymir that it's possible to stand against your oppressor. We're led to believe that thanks to Eren, the titan powers are gone for good, but Eren retained his titan shifter marks even after this happened. We're shown that global conflict continued despite Eren's actions, leading to the eventual destruction of Paradis. But something about the passage of time throughout the credit scenes left me with a strange feeling, like it's a story being told to people after the fact. In the exact spot where Eren's head is buried, a huge tree appears that looks identical to the one where Amir was given her powers. A dog and a young boy who bears a striking resemblance to Mikasa and possibly Eren stumble across this tree. So this leads to the big question. What happens next? This big brain theory is straight off the dome. The entire story of Attack on Titan took place because of one man, Carl Fritz, the Eldian king who felt guilty for the atrocities committed by the Eldians, creating a vow renouncing war. He took millions of Eldians with him to the island of Paradis, erecting three walls and using the threat of the Titans to deter any outside nation from attacking them. This plan would have completely fallen apart if it wasn't for one specific action he took. Carl Fritz used the Founding Titan's power to erase the memory of all Eldians. He then orchestrated a false history to be taught in books and in school, teaching that the humans of the outside world went extinct because of the Titans. This created peace within the walls, but a false, fabricated peace. What I'm about to present to you will completely change how you view the ending. What if Eren actually completed the rumbling, eradicating all life outside the walls, and everything we see about the attack on Titan Avengers taking down Eren is actually a false history? I believe Eren used the Founding Titan's ability to not only follow through with the rumbling, but also to erase the memory of all Eldians. This means everything we see about the rumbling being stopped and global conflict eventually wiping out entire nations was actually what Eren wrote into the history books after erasing everyone's memories. Eren flattened the earth, wiping out all non-Eldians, and fabricated the story that the rumbling was actually stopped. He then created a narrative that the rest of humanity wiped each other out. This explains why several aspects to the ending didn't make sense to me. If Eren had already received the Founding Titan's power directly from Emir, why would the rumbling stop after Levi took out Zeke? And why did the Hallucigenia disappear out of nowhere with no mention of it afterwards. I believe these are plot holes in the false history written by Eren. But this theory actually gets much darker, especially for Eren. It's possible Eren did actually take away the power of the Titans, but not all of them. I believe Eren kept the Titan powers himself and made it so that no one else could become a Titan. He reunited all nine Titan powers, becoming the source of living matter himself. His death and burial then led to the tree we see at the end of the credits, which the original ending never explained where it came from. I believe Eren is now waiting for the next next vessel to inherit his powers. But that's not all. The tree in the last scene suggests that Eren may have actually taken the place of Ymir in the paths. This means Eren's fate is worse than death, forced to live in the paths for what is literally an eternity, unable to forgive himself for the horrendous things he's done. The most agonizing and haunting regret of them all being that he was never able to get the Mikusi. Eren is waiting for someone to free him, and the boy we see in the last scene could be this someone. There are multiple times throughout the series where Eren predicts the future without us even knowing it. In season 3 after defeating the Colossal Titan and deciding who would eat birth control, Eren tells Levi that Armin will be the one to save humanity. But in Season 1, Eren himself declared that he'll destroy the entire world. My theory would allow these two seemingly contradictory predictions to make sense at the same time. Think about what this would solve. Eren would have eradicated the fear of the Titans throughout the entire world, and achieve exactly what he told the Eldians he would accomplish, to protect his people. Not only this, but through memory manipulation, Eren could prevent internal fighting by blaming the outside world for their struggles in his false history. At the very least, this would protect everyone he loves and buy himself more time to find a permanent solution to war and conflict. This is the perfect crime. No one except Eldians would be 
left alive, and wiping their memories of the true history would leave zero chance of his plan ever being uncovered. This theory is devilishly genius, because it shows that Aaron actually became the exact person he despised. Aaron telling the biggest lie in human history would make for some dark and morbid circular storytelling. A huge and recurring theme throughout Attack on Titan is that to defeat monsters, you have to become a monster yourself. Erwin's entire character and decisions revolve around this one principle. No one can deny that Attack on Titan pushes the idea that history repeats itself. Just like Carl Fritz, Eren used the Founding Titan's power to forcibly manipulate the Eldian people's memories to achieve his goals. Keep in mind, Eren has already done this exact thing. He manipulated Grisha's memories by showing him only enough to fulfill what he wanted, but not enough so that Grisha would try to act against him. If Grisha knew all of Eren's plan, that an immeasurable amount of people would die, including his wife Carla, Grisha would not have followed through with this. If Eren has already successfully manipulated the memories of his own father, who's to say he won't do it again? But to all of the Eldian people, only this time the chances of his plan failing are near zero. So why would Eren do this? Eren wanting to complete the rumbling but also wanting to be stopped by his friends doesn't really make sense. Eren admitted to Armin that he wanted the rumbling to happen, but it gets even more horrifying. Eren didn't just want to start the rumbling, he wanted to finish it all the way through. <laughs> Aaron wanted to trample the earth. He said he was disappointed with the outside world. And if you think about it, Aaron's primary motivation has been to explore the outside world, which doesn't require the people of the outside world being alive. Aaron directly stated that he would take the freedom from the world to achieve his own. Memory manipulation would give him the utmost freedom he desperately craved to explore the outside world. We know Aaron is not above lying to the entire world and to his friends. My theory is more in line with Aaron's personality. His inhuman determination led to his philosophy of I must keep moving forward, which contradicts with him wanting the rumbling to be stopped. Armin said that those who sacrifice nothing can change nothing, and I believe Eren left behind his personal morals to follow through with the rumbling. His very first and possibly most defining moment was when he took on the men who kidnapped Mikasa and offed her parents. Eren took a knife and pretended to be lost, using innocence as a way to carve an advantage. Without hesitation, Eren took the lives of those he viewed as unworthy, using any means necessary, and nothing's changed. <laughs> Aaron even said that he is who he's always been. He would undoubtedly resort to lies and duplicity if it means achieving his goals. The so-called Devils of Paradis putting an end to the rumbling and taking out Aaron is the perfect cover-up story to tell afterwards. It's no stretch to say that Aaron, having full access to what Carl Fritz did 100 years ago, would do the exact same thing. I'm not presenting anything new, but that what's already happened in the story is simply happening again. We know Amir would be more than happy to help Aaron, since this means Aaron would take her place in the paths. On top of exacting revenge on the world that took everything from her. Emir wanted a way out. So what does this mean? Eren successfully completed the rumbling and then used the Founding Titan's power to erase all collective memory of the rumbling's completion. He then created a false history where he was actually stopped and that the outside world destroyed each other. After doing all this, he went into hiding, running the Eldian Empire from the shadows. Eren was now finally able to see the outside world the way he dreamt about, knowing that his friends would be able to live out their lives in peace. This outcome would line up well with Eren's initial goal for the rumbling and create the sense of peace and freedom he wanted, even though it was the result of manipulation. This theory provides precious nourishment for the copium fiends, while also having that dark undertone tightly associated with the series. From here, I believe Eren made it so that no one else could use the Titan powers except him. After uniting all nine of the Titan powers, he eventually passes away from the curse of Ymir. With no one to inherit his powers, I believe Eren took the place of Ymir in the paths, waiting for the next vessel. A new season could cover what Eren's final four years look like, paving the way for an entirely new future. Or maybe the Eldian people are on the verge of extinction and Eren's powers are needed to save the world. Maybe a new cast of characters could seek to uncover the truth behind Eren's false history. Maybe when Eren takes the place of Emir in the paths, Emir is allowed to be born again, possibly as Historia's daughter, Heografia. I could definitely see a series following Emir in a new body as she struggles with the aftermath of Eren's actions. She would be fully aware of the truth of Eren's manipulation. At first, she understands Eren's actions, but begins to feel compelled to enlighten the Eldians to the actual truth of the world. It's also possible that Eren continues to pass down the Titan powers in secret, and history repeats itself with a new season following the next Eren Jaeger. It's also possible we get a prequel, which could be based on the Before the Fall series. At this point, I just want some continuation of the series. I don't care if the dog's the one that falls into the tree and becomes the next founding Titan. What do you think? Share this video until Isayama has no choice but to give us another season. Did you know you possess the most powerful Titan of them all? The Funding Titan. 
and your power is the strongest through donations that directly support the channel. The fanbase went absolutely crazy for my theory about how Amir has actually masterminded the entire plot of Attack on Titan, using the Attack Titan's power to receive memories from the future. This is my all-time favorite Attack on Titan theory, and it even explains the Attack on School casts. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to click on this video. Sayonara.